beautiful day for football here in mid-Michigan. Today, Central Michigan here for their home opener as they welcome the Colonials from Robert Morris, and this crowd is revved up and ready to go. We welcome you inside Kelly Short Stadium. I'm Dan Gatowski with former Aaron Wideout, Randy Buffington. Randy, let's talk first about the chips that go into SEC territory last week against Missouri. Not the win they wanted, but there's still lots of good things to take out of that game. Definitely. This is a Central Michigan team that played really well last week. Going down into the SEC, they battled, but they're still not satisfied. They still have a bad taste in their mouth from down in Columbia last week, but the good thing is they're still hungry. They've been chomping at the bit all week long, biting their nails, anticipating this big matchup, playing in front of fans they haven't seen in two years. And a new quarterback last week with Jacob Sermon delivering the goods against the Tigers. He did just that. This guy was poised back there. This is his first First time getting a shot. He spent three years down in Washington, and now he's leading the charge himself. So it'll be exciting to see what he does out there. Central Michigan's ground game was maybe even a little bit better, led by the freshman Lou Nichols, a great running back for the Chips. He's definitely a great running back with great vision. Coach talked about that in meetings all week long. So it'll be exciting to see what he does. 240 they could have had in rushing last week, but due to sacks, we didn't have that. Expect him to gain some ground this week. Let's flip it and talk about Robert Morris. The Colonials should have played last week at Dayton, but they were bitten by the COVID bug. A lot of personnel changes for them. That game was canceled. So today, we don't really know what we're going to get, but this guy, their quarterback, George Martin, a steady hand and very experienced. Definitely experienced, and, and that's what they're going to need. They have a lot of youth and inexperience in some places, but they're going to rely on George Martin's poise. He's a quiet leader for this team, and he'll hopefully rally them in the huddle and get something going for them. Chippewas trying to build off of what they did last week. Our kickoff from CMU is next. A lot of 9-11 reflections today. This is Central's quarterback, Bailey Smith, leading the charge for the Chippewas. Smith was a Ranger in the U.S. Army prior to enrolling at Central Michigan this summer. So a great thing there. And then the parachuters coming in more than we could count. And they're delivering the game ball here, right here to, uh, to midfield. How cool is that? Not, and not easy to do on a, a fairly breezy day here in mid-Michigan. And here's our head coach, is Bernard Clark, his fourth season in Robert Morris. Uh, he's a former NEC Coach of the Year. This team picked to finish in the lower half of the conference in the Big South. He's challenging his team. He wants to know, hey, what are we made of? We're better than that. Let's show it today against Central Michigan. On the other sideline, a guy who's just glad to be on the sideline this week. Jim McElwain was sidelined for the game at Missouri, had an appendix issue last week, and he was pretty ornery watching it on the couch here in Mount Pleasant when his Chippewas were trying to spring an upset in Missouri. So he's got this uh, team right where he wants them. He said, uh, Randy, that he likes all the pieces that he has now it's just a matter of kind of bringing them all together, and they did show good against the Tigers. Yeah, they're going to look to make some explosive plays early. They have a lot of weapons on offense. Speaking in that guy right there, Sermon. That guy right there, Jacob Sermon. He's going to expect to have a big day for him, but definitely a lot of weapons. Yeah, we told you the weather was good. A little bit on the warm side here in Mount Pleasant. Central wins the coin toss, and they will kick off first to the Colonials. So Central will go on defense first. And boy, all the coaches, you know, talking last week and this week, there's something about the energy that you have when you're getting ready for your home opener, especially last year when there were no fans. No fans at all. This is the first time that there is <laughs> Triple wides are in front of fans for the first time in two years. It is electric out here right now. And there is no return after the CMU kickoff by Marshall Meter. So the Colonials, we talked about the shuffling they've done personnel-wise, but it's up to this guy, George Martin. We'll lead the charge for him all day today, guys. He is poised, a quiet leader. A quiet leader, and uh, he'll be a calming presence, hopefully, for these Colonials today. And the coaches are telling him, you know what? You've got all the tools you need, George. You've got to trust yourself a little bit more. He's got everything that uh, a good quarterback needs, but maybe a little bit more self-confidence is what's going to 
carry him over the top. First and 10 from the 25. Hand off, they stay on the ground. Central Michigan puts the hammer. Quamir Jenkins is the running back, but two Chippewas there to put him down and stop that play for really no gain. Oh, what a pop here to start the game off, right? Get your defense all excited. Number 13, Troy Harrison. We're going to hear that name a lot today. Yeah, Central Michigan geared up to maybe take out some of that frustration from last week. They thought that was a winnable game at Missouri. Second and long, second and 11 for the Colonials. They'll run on the end here. This is a good opportunity. Jalen Brown getting positive yardage, but again, the Chips able to keep him contained and only a gain of a few yards. A little bit of trickery with the Jets sweep. You'd like to see him open up the offense a little bit there. Not too much of a game. The Colonials have good experience on that offensive line. Tight end is where they're really uh, kind of COVID affected. Definitely. Some question marks there for sure. Yeah, but it's that offensive line that's uh, going to try to make some good things happen early. Third and long right now for the Colonials. Martin's going to run on the ground. They're going to get a first down. No, not quite. Right to the line, of, right to that first down marker. And again, that's Devani Reed making the stop for Central Michigan. Let's see if they measure. Boy, he's about one yard short. Not a great spot. Maybe about uh, one yard away from that first down. That's going to bring out the punting unit for Robert Morris. Too bad they almost got it on that third down and long. Yeah, it was pretty close. Great way to run it up the gut there and almost had it. Central Michigan poised to maybe come out of this with good field position. Khalil Pimpleton is the return back, and man, is he a destructive force, and we got a really oh bad boy. punt. I don't know if that was tipped or not, but Central Michigan's going to start with the football. And Robert Morris is out of the field, so a special teams <laughs> impact play early is going to give CMU very good field position. Randy, what does Central want to do early on offense here to set the tone? They want explosive plays right out of the gate. That is something that Coach Kevin Barbe talked about on the early side. Here are your CMU keys to the game. Right now, you want them to protect the football. Last game, we had two interceptions out of Jacob Sermon, don't want to have that again, but we're definitely going to run that ball. You see Lou Nick was behind him, and he's going to get active early. Starting from the 42-yard line. Sermon's going to fake and go the other way. Throwing and complete far side. And a first down get for the Chippewas. Hook up with Dallas Dixon. Central Michigan looking like they're sharp early in the passing game. Jacob Sermon, this is a guy again out of Washington, spent three years there and transferred just now. This is the top guy out of 2018. He's just behind Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence as a top QB in that class. Chips on the grounds on this first down. Carry for Lou Nichols. He plows inside, pushes the pile, and finally stopped inside the 30. And if you're uh, grading out Central Michigan from last week, one of the deficiencies, that offensive line did not protect the quarterback very well. So that's going to be one of the things they'll be watching today. Second down and eight. Chippewas just inside the Colonials 30. Simon, little pump fake, now will throw out of bounds. Good secondary coverage there by Robert Morris. Smart play there just to get rid of it. You don't see, turn your eyes down, feel good, get it out of bounds. Corey Sullivan was the nearest wide receiver for CMU, but he was nowhere near. Now third and long for CMU. Want to take advantage of this good field position that they just got. On the ground, wide open in the middle, big push. And did they get enough? Boy, he's right there at the first down marker. Again, Lou Nichols, freshman from Cass Tech. A Michigan kid. Looks like he's got a Central Michigan first down. They gave it to him. Got the first down. Look at him. Running with his head down. Through two defenders. Three. Keep adding him. He's rolling. 
first down. I think that's four white jerseys. <laughs> Count them up. First down central. Just outside the 20 yard line. Simon, time in the pocket and incomplete. Oh, he had a good throw right on the numbers for Ja'Cory Sullivan, but just a little bit behind him. This is one he wishes he had back. Great, right up the seam. Great move by the, the defender there. Yeah, good coverage by Sidney Autiger. Autiger starting in place of Tim White who did not travel for Robert Morris. We'll be repeating that line a lot today because, again, the COVID affecting all kinds of schemes and personnel packages for the Colonials. And there's Pimpleton on the end. Sealed off effectively, though. We'll see that a lot today. This guy is scary out in open space. They're going to get him the ball in all types of situations. You'll see him lined up at receiver, at the slot, <laughs> motioning for jet sweeps like you just saw. This guy has something special. Jamar Shagag was the one who kind of contained and kept that uh, outside lane closed for Pimpleton. Third and long for CMU. Sermon, little short throw underneath. That's complete. That's a first down. And the hookup with Darius Bracey out of back. Field. Tackle by Chagog, but it's not enough to stop a CMU first down. This is the depth that we talked about at running back. Now, these are guys that are without their star in Kobe Lewis last year. They're all stepping up, making big plays. Bracey with nice hands out of the backfield, picking up that first down. Central Michigan working on the short field. And now they're inside the 10. Handoff up the middle. This is Nichols pounding it down to about the one yard line. Dragging defenders with him. Tyren Cloyd on the stop. That's a VMI transfer. Not especially big, but he's tall and he's got speed. Sometimes he'll drop back into the secondary. And he keeps Nichols out of the end zone. Second and goal from the two. This is Nichols. Stopped and pushing ahead for maybe a yard. Big stop there for Robert Morris. Audiger stopping Lou Nichols there. Boy, I tell you, Central Michigan trying to just pound it inside. They're looking to make lanes right in the middle. Big third and goal from the one. Nichols up in the air. Did he get in? One official, two officials not signaling. So that means he didn't get in. Chagog was the one who Got the big hit to keep him out of the end zone, and it's fourth and goal from the half-yard line. Oh, man, these fans are not happy right now. Not sure. Not sure how close he was. It looked close. He got airborne. Didn't get it. There's the run. There's the there touchdown. Lou Nichols off the edge for CMU. Well, when you've got the kind of quickness and range that Lou Nichols does, containing him and keeping him off the perimeter is going to be a big challenge. Point after. Bounces right through the uprights. Timeout here, Central Michigan leading Robert Morris.
Central Michigan took an early punch last week at Missouri. Today, they're the ones throwing the early punch. The early score here, courtesy of that guy, Lou Nichols. Swing it for the fences on the early side. You'd love to see. 12 carries and 42 yards. The short field works well. And Central Michigan now kicks Robert Morris on offense for the second series. These are dangerous times for a team like Robert Morris. Keys to the game for them. they got to figure out a way to maybe keep their offense on the field this drive. Definitely. They're going to rely on that heavily. They're going to rely on this defense to make big third down stops. And a, a huge key to that is no missed tackles. Their coach talked about flying all over the place. You're going to make mistakes. You guys are young and inexperienced, but move around at 100 miles an hour. Take away the run and do your job. Don't be a hero out there. It's not about that. It's about taking care of your assignment. If you do that as a collective, you may win a ball game. George Martin trying to spark up this offense. There's a first down run and a positive pickup for Robert Morris. They are leaning on that Kwamir Jenkins. Yeah, he's going to be their guy today in absence of Elijah Jackson. They're missing him right now due to COVID, but you'd love to see guys stepping up, right? That's what college football is all about. They want to bring Jenkins along slowly, but he's got to put in the fire today. Second down and four after the gain of six on that carry. Jenkins, pretty much the same spot. Not as much yardage, though. They get outside the 30. It's going to bring up third and short. Third down and three. Not an easy position for Robert Morris. Amir Jordan is in the backfield with George Martin. Martin's going to throw and roll out. And it is caught. And it is complete right in front of the Central Michigan bench. Wow, great hookup for Bryce Bevins. That's a catch for you right there. On the sidelines, tippy toes, twinkle toes. How about that? Ooh. That is close, but it is a first down get for the Colonials. Coming back to the quarterback in moments like that, not leaving him hanging. Good catch on the sidelines. They get to the 44-yard line. Back on the ground. Nothing flashy there from Amir Jordan. Amir Jordan, the ball carrier. Thomas Incum is the tackler for Central Michigan. You know, and again, we in, in talking with Bernard Clark this week, he says, hey, all the COVID confusion we've had, it's just not going to be easy for Central Michigan to really know what we're going to be executing today in this game. Quarterback toss. This is the Jordan carry gets right to midfield so a good decision to get rid of it and positive yardage for Robert Morris he got rid of it at the right time he was going to get swallowed back there good thing to get rid of it and just take care of yourself Deshaun McNary on the stop but yeah, Robert Morris mixing things up by necessity there you can see right there the numbers just really crimping the game plan for this week and going back to last week's canceled game martin throws short oh big hit right after the catch there is no room to go <laughs> man i'll tell you what alonzo mccoy read that thing like the back of his hand boy hitting the stance after that get excited nice little roll out there pop oh yeah he's going down Got to get this, this team all jazzed up. Got these fans excited for a bit, so big turnover on downs. So the Colonials get to midfield, and that's it. Punt time for Robert Morris. Better punt. Pimpleton catches it on the run in traffic. 
That was a little dangerous. A lot of white jerseys around. Central Michigan football when we come back to Mount Pleasant. Robert Morris's game plan obviously compromised with the COVID strike that hit the program last week. So coaches working with that offensive line just to you know, juice it up a little bit more. They get a couple first downs, get to midfield, but the drive stalls in Central Michigan now trying to build on a 7-0 lead here. Sermon under center. Did not look like a kid that was uncomfortable in any way last week when they played in the SEC at Missouri. Oh, not at all. Adonai Columbia, he was very comfortable. Play fake on first down. All kinds of time. Deep ball and incomplete. A little bit too far. Dallas Dixon wanted a flag. Coverage there was by Tevin Harville. Hold the phone. He's got a cannon. <laughs> Sorry, Taven Harville. If that thing would have landed in the right spot, mm. they'd have had a different conversation. How close is that to INT? Pretty, clo pretty close. You pause. <laughs> that means it's close. Second down and 10. Little jitterbug move and big run here. Central Michigan exploding off that run. And again, Darius Bracey, not the only guy who can do damage in the run game for CMU. Bracey breaks a big one. Look at that. Truck stick. Missed tackle. The one thing that RMU wanted to stop, they are not, it's not working right now. They got to figure it out. The longest run for CMU. And they're starting to make some holes there. They shake things up. Miles Bailey on this carry into Colonial's territory. Wrapping up and not having arm tackles is something that's going to keep this defense, keep this offense honest. But you can't help it with a guy like Bracey. You put him out the truck stick right now. Ricardo Watson on the tackle, but Central Michigan playing with a lot of confidence after their week one effort at Missouri. Quick throw, good pressure, a little screen pass underneath, and he lost his footing and almost looks like he was going to lose the football. Got back up, though. Dallas Dixon able to regain his composure, lost it, grabbed it. That's a good play. save. That had a lot of everything that played Yeah, it. it was a lot of action going on back there. Thankfully, he saved it, and uh, they lived to play another down. So it brings up third down and three. Good pressure from the defensive front there for Robert Morris. This is Bracey in the middle for a first down and then some. Two tacklers. But he gets inside the 40-yard line to the Robert Morris 35, a big hole inside. Oh, yeah. That's that vision that we talk about out of these backs. Them getting loose, find situations where they can ease and wiggle through, and he almost got loose on that one. Central Michigan, a lot of success coming up the middle in the run game. They're not going wide. They can pound it inside for big numbers. First and 10 at the 35. Little Wildcat. Oh, they got a big run here. On his feet, getting a whole bunch, is number 88, Khalil Pimpleton, inside to the 10. Number 88, He's kept out of the end zone, but not, after, not until a big CMU pickup. Matthew Holmes makes the stop. Look at that stiff arm. Getting loose. This guy is special. The coaches talked about him all week long. The heart and soul of this football team. Coach said he has him come into to start the week at the top of the week to bring a smile on his face. This is the type of guy that he is to this program. Brings all kinds of positive energy. Ball at the 12-yard line. CMU on the move again. Play fake. Sermon all kinds of time. Now it finally collapses on him, and he's taken down. Well, he tried to communicate with his receiver there. Funny how, funny how that window can just slam shut all of a sudden. Just like that. 1-1000, one, 2-1000. One Down it goes. J Jamar Shagog makes the sack for Robert Morris. 
That's a loss of only four yards. So it's second down and 14 from the 16. They'll toss. This is Nichols trying to get the edge. Stays up. Good containment there. Some yardage, but still. Taven Harville on that stop for Robert Morris. They want to take away the outside. It seems like they're, if they're kind of picking their poison, they're going to let Central run inside as opposed to getting wide. Yeah, that, that's and it, they're keeping contained right now, so that's a good thing on their front, but they got to stop these long runs. They're doing a good job of it right now to see if they can keep it up. Third down and 12 for CMU. Sermon throwing in the middle and almost breaking out of an ankle tackle is Ja'Cory Sullivan. I don't think he got the first down, but he's awfully close. Looks like about a yard or two short. They're going to spot it right inside the four-yard line. Just a little shy, but great effort on that play. Timeout here at, as we move towards the end of our first quarter. Central Michigan on the move. Drive. They are right on the cusp of the first down marker. Actually, well, they're, they're calling it fourth and one. Looks like maybe almost two yards. They went for it on fourth and goal on their first drive, and they scored. And they're going to go for it again here. This is fourth and one for the chips Bracy in the middle he is tackled from behind boy it's close I'm not sure about that Robert Morris thinks they made the stop and they did how about that big play on fourth down out of Robert Morris Jamar, Jamar Chagog we're calling his name a lot and uh, I mean he wasn't the only one but he is helping this Look at him sneak in the back there. He gets him from behind. All types of effort on that play. You love to see it. Dave plunges, talked about the things that they like to do. They like to take away two to three things and make teams play left-handed. So he did it just like that on that play. And uh, let's see if they can keep it up going into this second half. Yeah, it's kind of good news, bad news for uh, Robert Morris. Good news is they have... Uh, they stop the CMU drive. Bad news is your field position's not so good. Starting from your own five. This is safety territory. So see how aggressive George Martin is here. With bad field position, they'll run and eh, maybe get a couple yards, maybe one. And that's going to put an end to our first quarter of football. The Colonials. On the road here at Central Michigan, but the Chips have a 7-0 lead at home. Early second quarter. A quick run there for Robert Morris. Didn't get them anything, and they're looking at a long third down and 10 with field position that you don't want if you're on offense. They'll keep it on the ground and try and run it inside, but there is no room at all there. Stuffed on that one. Yeah, that's Amir Jordan on the run, but... Uh, Three and out for Robert Morris. Not a good recipe, and this will probably end up being good field position for CMU. Central tackle by Kyle Moretti. Robert Morris punting from deep out of their own end zone. This is George Souders. This is where you got to be careful where you plant your feet. And there's a, a very good kick caught on the fly by Khalil Pimpleton, who's going to try and stretch this out. Flag thrown. He gets down to about the 25, but the flag is maybe going to bring this ball a little bit back the other way for CMU. Yeah, good return here by Pimpleton. We'll, we'll see what happens here. 
Flags are never a good sign. Not when you're returning. <laughs> During the return, holding, return team number 37. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, timeout. Rolly Ann Sturkey on that penalty. More football when we come back to CMU. So far, so good for Central Michigan. They'll start this drive with good field position even after the holding penalty. So this is at the 41-yard line of Robert Morris. CMU has not reached in for any real big splashy plays yet. Just kind of methodical. Some short passes mixed in with some good running in the middle. And there's a run on the edge for Marion Lukes, who tries to turn it back in, but really only gets maybe a yard, maybe nothing for CMU. Lukes is one of their young backs that they're really excited about. And in this stable, they got a lot of weapons. What do you think is the mindset, Randy, for Robert Morris defensively? Is it kind of maybe like a bend but don't break? Obviously, you don't want big plays, but you got to kind of be happy with what they're doing so far, right? Yeah, they definitely have to be excited about it. Um, don't speak too soon. Well, again, they've, they've been able, that's to Remy Simmons on the catch. But again, they've been able to stop that big play. Yeah. That, because those are the plays that can really turn a game like this against you. The longer you keep the score close, the more self-confidence you're going to get. They get the first out. You know, it wasn't a, a huge play necessarily. Yeah, it's all about building, and that's what Bernard Clark Jr. talked about his guys having, right? This is their first game all season long. We have a lot of youth and inexperience, but let's, let's show and prove today. Empty backfield for Sermon. Again, looking downfield. Nobody's open. He'll roll it and just head out of bounds. He could have made a sandwich back there. <laughs> Too bad his receivers couldn't get free. A good secondary coverage by the Colonials. Well, you you know, you go through their depth chart. And I, I, I wrote in my notes, NMT, meaning they didn't travel. So they have a lot of players that we would thought we'd see for Robert Morris that uh, have not traveled. Again, COVID was a huge challenge for them last week and of course spilled over into this week. Second and 11 on the ground. Oh, good run here for Nichols. Shook off that first tackler inside the 25. Taven Harville on the stop, but they're real close to a first down. Some good yardage there making folks miss. That vision, <laughs> that's that vision that we talked about. Coach said, that Lou Nichols has something on his left peripheral. He sticks a foot in the ground and makes everybody miss. He, it's, it's kind of a blur back there. Third and three. On the run, trying to get the edge. And Robert Morris is going to stuff Lou Nichols and keep him out of the first down marker. They tried to stretch it, but they couldn't stretch it enough, and Nichols gets taken down short of that first down. Didn't really keep outside contain there. So they get a gate of zero. It's fourth down and three, and Central's going to go for it. Oh, good pressure. Oh, he shakes off the would-be tackler. Now he's going to improvise and dive ahead for the first down. Jacob Sermon, he's not a runner. But that's some nice footwork there. He is doing some dancing back there. Check him out, right? Missing tackle. One step. Another. Two step. How about that? Get in loose. Get in the yardage need. You only needed a little bit. And he did just that. He's not a runner, but he's making it happen. He made that first down happen. CMU inside the Robert Morris 20-yard line. On the ground, Robert Morris getting pressure on Miles Bailey tackling from behind. Bailey falls ahead for some positive yardage. Not a whole lot, though. It looked better than it uh, than it seemed. Like a 
mirage. Oh, that, yeah, that was right like a mirage. Second and nine. Bailey again in the middle. Powers stays up. Steps out of a tackle inside the 10 to about the 7. That's second effort. Huge. Huge out of Bailey. One. Bump tackle. I'll take some more. It's that second effort that's getting them the yardage to extend the play. Robert Morris, this is where it's really hard. You want that first hit to be enough, but it was not that time. First and goal from the eight. Sermon hands off. They're going to try and run the edge. He works it inside again with Darius Bracey. He's had some big runs earlier for CMU inside the five down to the three yard line. Again, another another outside run that we see here. Starting to see a trend. So hard for Robert Morris to win the battles up front. That was one of their key spots, defensive line with a lot of missing players due to COVID. Play fake, end zone, wide open, touchdown. CMU hooks up Hunter Buskowski. Wide open to the tight end. Easy, easy pitch and catch here. They practice this all day long. Fullback, tight ends. Those are guys that are quarterback's best friends out there, right? But Butchkowski's going to one place. And he went to the wide open area, and that play was run to perfection. PAT makes it. 14-0 Central Michigan lead. This is how the drive stayed alive. The footwork from Jacob Sermon that kept the drive going. And here's the finish. Sermon on the toss to Hunter Butchkowski. And it's a 14-0 CMU lead. Central Michigan continuing to take advantage of good field position. And again, they've kind of methodically picked away at Robert Morris and the last score coming for Hunter Butchkowski on the wide open uh, touchdown catch after the throw by Sermon. Again, tight ends are your best friend down there in close down and distance situations. This is the freshman Josh Ralston trying to Maybe put some stick on that football to keep it on the tee. It's been a fairly breezy day here in mid-Michigan. Not too crazy, but noticeable. And he kicks this one short, and it is going to start at the 15. Timeout here at Central. The chip's up by two touchdowns. Well, to say that Bernard Clark, the head coach for Robert Morris, had his hands full last week is putting it mildly. They got hit by COVID, tried to maneuver things around and keep everybody healthy, and you can see the timeline there from last week. They just got to Friday and had to cancel the game against Dayton, and there, of course that spills over into this week too because some guys are not all the way back yet. Yeah, life comes at you fast for this program, especially last week was a doozy. They lost a lot of guys, 26 due to COVID and contact tracing, so there are a lot of unknowns, but again, we're finding it all out in person today. On the ground on first down. And it's been a fairly conservative game plan so far. That's Amir Jordan on the carry for the Colonials. How do you talk about Robert Morris and their offense so far? Randy, what do you like about what they're doing? Coach talked about simplifying the offense, Gabe Lavara this week, 
and uh, a lot of youth in certain positions, but they're going to let George Martin control this game, manage this game. Little short throw to Quamir Jenkins. They think he's the guy that is maybe the, the difference maker in terms of making big plays for their offense today. Again, they're missing some uh, some big names. Elijah Jackson, Jonathan Wynn did not make the trip. Yeah, they're missing some key guys. And one thing that Bernard talked about was, you know, this isn't the scout team anymore, right? They were going yeah. up against some big opponents. And we're going to have to make transitions and adjust to real game speed, right? So this is uh this is different for them, but they're making it they're making it work. Third down and six. Martin's going to throw. He's got time. It's thrown a little bit behind and incomplete. Central Michigan able to break it up. That was Sam English, the tight end, who just could not hold it. A little English on that football, but that is one that you definitely want to have, right? You got to you got to make that play, extend these this possession, and uh, give your team a chance. But that's one he wishes he would have back. And Alonzo McCoy, good coverage there. So. Central Michigan stepping up defensively, and it's punt time for Robert Morris. This is George Souders, who's been getting better as this day has gone on, kick-wise. That's a good one, caught by Pimpleton. See what he can do on a return. And there's white jerseys all over him, and a flag coming in late. We're going to see what that flag is. So we'll sort out this penalty first. Tom Stapleton is our referee today here in Mount Pleasant. During the return, personal foul, face mask, kicking team. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, timeout. So a timeout here at CMU Central Football when we continue. Here's a look at some of the action coming next week with home games for Miami of Ohio, Akron, and then Bowling Green. So that's all 3.30, uh, 3.30, and then 5 o'clock. So still uh, lots of good football to come here with these Mid-American Conference teams. First and 10 for the Chips. They'll stay on the ground. How about a bounce outside run by Lou Nichols? First down and a little bit more for CMU. Early first down to move the chains on that. This good stuff out of Nichols. That's William Barber, the young safety, quick and tall, but he could not get to Lou Nichols in time before Central broke it open for a big run to the 28-yard line of Robert Morris. Play fake, time. Now it's Nichols on the catch. And a good ankle tackle. Good cover there. Robert Morris. Jamar Shagag does it again. Definitely great coverage out of Robert Morris on that. Because Sermon had his eyes up. He was looking for Pimpleton on the, the flag route. He wasn't able to get it right. And uh, but Robert, Morris is, Robert Morris is making some plays, doing what they needed to do, creating situations where they're playing left-handed. Sermon tossing to Nichols, and there is not much there for him on that far edge. No pun intended, but here it comes. Central Michigan just kind of chipping away at what Robert Morris is trying to do defensively. That's exactly what they're doing right now. Third down and six. Sermon, quick toss, wide open. First down, and get, blocked. and then some for Central. Shakuri Sullivan, touchdown, CMU. You got to love it. Give me that yak. Oh, man. This is a quick hitch route. Turn to the outside, right? Get linebackers discombobulated. I'm walking in the end zone. 
That uh, started badly for Robert Morris. A guy wide open. They couldn't close. We talk about Ben, but don't break. That time, they broke. They broke big time. And uh, he bro Sullivan broke big on that one to, to make a big play for his team. He did great last week. He's, he's improving, and he just keeps left up playing the guitar, having some fun out there. Sullivan, the senior from Muskegon. Get it loose. Nice cut. And a, and a good turn upfield right away as soon as he got it. But sometimes when you're that wide open as a former wideout, you kind of you're, you're off your game a little bit when you catch it in that kind of space, right? Yeah. You just got to turn, turn to the sideline. That's your friend, right? Stick a leg in the ground and get open, and that's exactly what he did. It's a pitch and catch. They're doing this every single day. He's caught a thousand of those balls, right? Pitch and catch every single day in practice and pregame warmups. It, it's easy. Two touchdown throws for Jacob Sermon. And Central Michigan settling in quite nicely. The 24-yard catch by Ja'Cory Sullivan. And an uphill battle continues to get more uphill for Robert Morris. Short kick, fair catch. No return by the Colonials. Definitely need a big response here out of Robert Morris. This could be the deciding factor in uh, how this team is going to move, right? Yeah, they've got to, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's obvious, but, you know, you got to sustain some drives. Your defense is going to get tired. And it's the, the sun has gone away. It's not, doesn't feel quite as hot as it did at kickoff, but still, this is a dangerous time for Robert Morris in terms of how competitive they can be in this game going into the later part of this second quarter. They'll carry on first down and they won't get much of anything. Again, they're mixing it up in the run. That's Jordan Johnson on the carry. But Troy Brown, the junior linebacker, from Carmen Ainsworth makes the stop. They lose two yards, second and 12. Really hard when your offense can't produce positive yardage on first down, Randy. It makes it hard on everybody. All phases of the game. Martin's got some pressure coming. Now a little out throw, complete, and still trying to stay up. They don't really get much on that one either. Defensive coordinator Rob Ackie talked about them being an 11 hat to the ball defense. We saw it just now. These guys do not mess around. They like to be explosive and move around at 100 miles an hour. That's one thing that the coach preached about, having some players making some big plays. Whether they're young, like a, a Jason Williams at defensive tackle, or some of their veteran guys, but they're going to make it happen out there on defense for sure. Justin Whiteside stopping Jordan Johnson there. Third and 16. Martin will hand off. They get some room in the middle, but not really enough to threaten and get a first down for sure. That's Johnson on the carry, but Colonial's just reluctant to take that risky chance downfield. And a timeout will stay here. And you got to take a shot, right? You got to give your team something to get excited about. Take a shot downfield. We're down 21 to zero right now. We need some juice, we need some energy. We're away. But, uh, well, Robert Morris lost one of the all-time greats from their program with Joe Walton, who passed away on Sunday. This is back in August, passed away last month. Uh, he was 85 years old, kind of the godfather of Robert Morris football. He touched so many lives and players in a positive way. And it did some great things just starting the program, building it up to some great heights. And uh, Bernard Clark is honored to follow in his footsteps at Robert Morris. Yeah, Joe Walton building up the program, round up 94. It's still rolling. So there's a punt. Another, <laughs> boy, the punts just get better and better, but. Pimpleton, let's see what he could do. A little shake and bake, and now he's going to stream and not quite get outside. Boy, 
<laughs> for about a 10-yard return and had a lot of a wow factor in it, didn't it? Definitely had some fun out there. He was shaking it. You said it right, shaking big, right? Awkward way to catch the ball off the rip. Oh, man, it was a pinball machine back there with that blocker. <laughs> well, we, we've seen good work for work footwork from from both Jacob Sermon and Khalil Pimpleton. Those guys must take like ballroom dancing or something here. Maybe not ballroom dancing. A little bit of sauce. Yeah, they mix it up. Injured player on the field for Robert Morris. Here, number 29, 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down. Let's see if we can ID that Colonial player. Sidney Audiger, who was an important player in that Colonial secondary. The penalty is going to hurt Central Michigan. But in the big picture, it's been a pretty solid first half for CMU. For sure. Good to see Audiger get up here. One thing that Jim McElwain talked about prior to this game was them having speed. And <laughs> one place that we definitely see speed is the South. And we have a lot of Florida guys in the secondary making it happen. Him out of, out of Fort Lauderdale. And, uh, Glad to see him come back up. But he said those Florida guys aren't scared of anything. They don't back down. So something different for Central Michigan, starting with bad field position. They are backed up inside their own 15-yard line. They're at the 14. And Central Michigan going to go a little wildcat here, or at least change quarterbacks. Daniel Richardson is under center for Sermon. Now they'll throw. Oh, man, wide open in the middle. How do they break this? Ramey Simmons gets a whole bunch of yardage back, and they get almost to midfield. Well, a different look. I am fired up. up here. You should have saw the dance I just did. Look at him right down the middle of the scene, breaking tackles, getting loose, hitting the B button. That's some yardage right there. So they're going to stay with Richardson at quarterback. Hand off. And not a whole lot there for Marion Lukes. We'll take a look at this Central Michigan quarterback. Jim McElwain was very comfortable with Jacob Sermon last, Sermon last week, but he knows he's got a competent, efficient quarterback in Daniel Richardson, yeah. who had a lot of good reps last year. Definitely. They have 100% trust in him. Jim McElwain talked about that. Kevin Barbe said the same thing. And this is a guy that played one down last game and stepped in and threw a touchdown on his first pass completion. Play fake, pressure coming. Now a little toss in the middle, wide open. Grabbed by Dallas Dixon. He is going to stay up and finally take it out almost at the 10-yard line. Miles Hayes makes the stop, but it's a huge pickup for CMU. Right. Central ready for some more points here. Richardson on the roll, and he'll look end zone incomplete. Some contact for Dallas Dixon, but nothing too flagrant. D. Rich is comfortable, right? Thinking about this game, he's coming in his first drive. Very loose, very comfortable. It doesn't matter if he sat on the sidelines all game like last game, stepping up, making a big play. Right now he's getting his opportunity to, with this drive, proving to his coaches, hey, guys might have made a mistake, but he's making it happen thus far. From the 16-yard line. Central trying to bang it in with their backup quarterback, Daniel Richardson. Play fake. In the middle, incomplete, and no flag. Oh, Robert Morris, that was good coverage there on Ja'Cory Sullivan. Taven Harville was the one who was getting a lot of boos from CMU fans in that south end zone. And everywhere else, actually, not just the south end zone. They're not too happy with him right now, but a great play to make a play on the ball there. 
that's what you need out of defensive backs, right? Don't just let it come down. And make a make a swipe at the ball. Well, the officials are trying to sort something out over on the Robert Morris sideline. And now they're talking at the 15, 16 yard line. Let's see what this is. Tom Stapleton will straighten it out for us. Set the game clock to 143, please. 143, and the clock will start on the snap. Well, that's not exactly what Robert Morris wants. Thank you. <laughs> I want to go the other way. Yeah. So it's still a big play here, third and ten. And now a timeout taken by. Bernard Clark and the Colonials. First. They want to try to hold Central Michigan from putting some points on here late in this first half. So the Colonials knew coming into today, Randy, this would be a tough challenge. They thought they were going to play last week and open their season at Dayton. COVID comes tearing into the program and turns everything upside down. And yeah, they're excited to play, but when you don't have all of your key personnel in their main spots, that's going to be hard for any coach and team, right? Definitely. It makes it very tricky. Uh, a lot of youth out here, a lot of freshmen getting their first opportunity in a college football setting. So this is just something to get used to for them in general. Looking at Dave Mundus here, he preached. We want to simplify. We don't make, we want to make things too difficult for these guys going into this game. Let's wrap up put our guys in good position and get the offense back so get our offense back the ball yeah pretty COVID touched so many people in that program including Dave Plunks last week so the Colonials set up on defense Richardson pressure coming he'll unload and in the end zone Clark, touchdown Dallas Dixon Late flag, maybe a celebration in fraction by CMU. You know, the, the way the pressure was coming on Richardson, it looked like he was just going to throw that thing into section four. Instead, end zone, touchdown CMU. In the face of pressure. How about that big drop, first drop. The results of the play is touchdown. touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number six. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. That's number six's first unsportsmanlike of the game. Well, that's what, that's a mental error that Jim McElwain's not going to be too happy about, but... He had a smile on his face yeah. just now. He isn't too mad. He can't be mad at a touchdown, right? Not, not too much. Point after is good. Is good. Let's see how this drive plays out. The new quarterback... Daniel Richardson, a familiar name for CMU fans, stepping in and looking sharp. Throwing over the middle seems to suit him quite well. The first play, then another hookup. And boy, the, the chemistry between him and Dallas Dixon is good. Look at this one. Boom. Central Michigan. 28-0 now is the lead here on Robert Morris. Both quarterbacks making plays earlier. It's a good problem to have, right? They talked about having both confidence in both of these quarterbacks. It was a good battle this summer watching these two guys work. And, uh, they were confident in Sermon coming out, but they knew that they had a good guy in D. Rich as well. And Jim McElwain told us this week, he goes, you know, we're, we're really lucky to have 
two quarterbacks, it's not really a controversy per se because, you know, Jacob Sermon is the definitive number one, but, you know, when you have depth of that quarterback position, that makes a big difference. And Dallas Dixon now four catches for 67 yards. A lot of good numbers offensively for CMU and the best ones are on the scoreboard 28 nothing and Robert Morris is going to have a lot of work to do here as this second half starts to wind down yeah free kick out of bounds Kicking team number 63. The ball will be placed 25 yards from the previous spot, which is the 30 yards from the previous spot, which is the 50 yard line. First down. Well, Robert Morris just really has not been able to counter punch with what Central Michigan has been doing to them. They're going to get good field position here, but again, it's the propensity to not take chances and make a big play that's maybe holding them back a little bit. And they stay on the ground. This is a decent run, but, you know, to get two and three yards is not really going to change the game as Quamir Jenkins on the ball carry for Robert Morris. Always tough for a coach to know how aggressive can our game plan be and how do we change our game plan to maybe be, maybe be more uh, impactful, explosive when we're down four scores. Spin move, that's Quamir Jenkins again getting inside to about the 45. And they're sticking to the trot and shoot right now. They said run is what we're going to stick to. Early on, trust our running back. We have a lot of good schemes that they have confidence in. But again, down 28-0, you need to take a shot, especially right now. The clock is ticking. Let's get some points on the board. Deshaun McNary on the tackle. Again, we said this is an experienced quarterback who can handle the difficult environments. That's George Martin. He'll roll out. Big pressure and throw out of bounds incomplete and it brings up fourth down that's going to mean a robert morris punt troy brown on the cover there that's a guy that made a lot of plays for the chippewas last season well all that does is put number 88 in that maroon and yellow jersey deep for that's Khalil Pimpleton. That's what you kind of don't want to see if you're Robert Morris. You definitely don't want to see him get loose back there. Eighteen seconds is all that's left between now and halftime, but pressure coming and kind of a safe punt and a good one. Bounces into the end zone, no return. And that's good enough for Robert Morris, and that sets up what uh, will likely be a very non-eventful play here with 10 seconds left in our second quarter. Well, the one good thing we've seen from Central Michigan, multiple good things, but I would say maybe the versatility of their offense. They haven't been... You know, big play crazy, just been kind of doing it methodically and patiently. Definitely, and a lot of, again, a lot of weapons that we talked about. They were running the ball early on. We were able to spread it out here with D. Rich recently and uh, making some plays on, in all facets of the game. That's what you need. And Daniel Richardson has replaced Jacob Sermon at quarterback. They'll run and Keep it safe and let the second quarter game clock go to double zero. And a 28-0 halftime lead for CMU. Half. 
Chippewa. The Chips are back home and they are very comfortable playing here at Kelly Shorts after a good showing last week at Missouri. Halftime at Mount Pleasant with Central Michigan up on Robert Morris. When Nick Saban asks if you would come and speak to his football team, yes or no, not the answers. What time is the answer? What time is the answer all across college football these days, as coaches turn their team meeting rooms into a who's who of motivational speakers? Massive action. Somebody always says, how did you do it? We've had lots of guys speak over the years. I mean, tons of, of professional athletes, authors, great leaders, generals, you name it. Wise people learn from others. My goal in life is to figure out your name by the end of the day. It's an interesting trend for sure. I think that it might just come down to the motivation of seeing somebody who's been where you want to be. It all started with a dream. I wanted to be a football player. You hear from your coaches every day, you hear from the players every day. It's just a you know, breath of fresh air to, to hear somebody else talk. But in this game, you can't have instant success without work. This guy, he doesn't need really any introduction. Not surprisingly, the best programs in the country seem to attract the best guest speakers. Kobe was phenomenal when he was here. When we line up, regard me, my whole purpose was to get you to reconsider your life choice to play basketball. <laughs> First thing I look at is, can they capture the audience? My arm and my hand got paralyzed. My heart didn't. What message are they gonna deliver? And does that message move the needle? My work ethic didn't. My spirit didn't. This injury never penetrated my spirit, man. Touches the heart of the players, moves them in some way, emotionally. Every single second, that you're here, make it worth it, and earn it. I always say it, it's not hard, because I loved what I was doing. And when we bring in guest speakers, I just want to see transparency. What gets me focused in on what they're saying is how they control the room. I'm here to share some of the experiences that I've had, the ups, the downs, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Even the master motivators can be inspired. I think Ernie Johnson said it best, and I think of this a lot. What I've got is a get-to job, not a got-to job. I get to do that. When you look across, you don't got to do this. Eyes. You get to do it. And when you think of it that way, you know it puts a positive spin on every challenge that you have in life. Some speakers come out and say, you know, it's okay not to be okay, and that that, that speaks volume. I know the thing that they're talking about. It comes from their heart. When you hear it coming from a different voice, it can hit home a little bit differently. Because you never know when it's going to be that last day. You never know when it's going to be that last play. So while you got it, do yourself a favor. Appreciate it. We're at halftime between Central Michigan and Robert Morris. We'll come back with our first half stats and highlights in just a moment from Mount Pleasant. Central Michigan's Chippewas, a very comfortable first half in their home opener against Robert Morris. Coming up, we'll check out the uh, first half highlights and whatnot, but we've got MAC football coming up next weekend. Again, the Mid-American Conference, lots of good teams coming into conference, Bowling Green, Akron, and Miami of Ohio all at home. We'll have our first half highlights and stats when we come back. So far, very good in the home opener for Central Michigan as they have a four touchdown lead on Robert Morris. We welcome you back inside the Kelly Short Stadium. Dan Gatowski along with Randy Buffington. And Randy, we saw uh, Central Michigan do a lot of things differently. No big plays per se, but they mixed it up very well in the first half. For sure, they're getting the job done. The game plan is working like a charm. They're relying on a lot of their weapons right now. Lou Nichols. Dixon stepping up, and now we're seeing even a backup quarterback in Daniel Richardson making a lot of plays. This is a lot of good stuff. Early on, Central Michigan yet got took advantage of very good field position. This is uh, the Nichols touchdown one that gets them on the board. Then 
They go on the air. It's some good footwork from their quarterback, Jacob Simon. Dance right now. Keep the drive alive, and that's what led to this touchdown to the tight end. Sermon with conservative passes, but again, the yardage after the catch, they really weren't designed as big plays, but they ended up turning into big plays. Exactly. Quick little pitch and catches, and just putting the foot in the ground and making a play. And the new quarterback comes in, that's Daniel Richardson. Chippewas don't miss a beat, and they've got a 28-0 lead. Stats, obviously, very CMU friendly right now. Definitely, this is one-sided right now. 28 to zero, making a lot of big plays, and again, using those weapons that we talked about. Again, the game, the, the game plan is working tremendously. Robert Morris has to get their act together. Big numbers for the chips. 28 nothing. It's Central Michigan football when we start our third quarter. 28 nothing is our score here in Ladies Mount Pleasant. And, and it has been unpleasant for Robert Morris. And they have, to, what's even more unpleasant, they have to go on defense to start the third quarter. So if you're in the locker room right now with Robert Morris, it's a, a, definitely a, a big challenge in front of you. And you can see the Central Michigan Chippewas finish the first half very strong. Definitely a strong finish. They're doing exactly what they needed to do early on. Making some plays. Jacob Sermon we're seeing right now leading the charge on the early side. D. E. Rich picking it up on the back end. Yeah, this has just been uh, a lot of good things. We, we talked about Central Michigan and their opening game loss at Missouri. Well, we know that Jim McElwain said, hey, you know what, we belong. We belonged in that game. We we should have won it, really. We took ourselves out of the game with mistakes. So the fact that they could come home, get comfortable, get productive early, shouldn't surprise anyone. Yeah, talking to a lot of the players and the coaches, they honestly felt like they let one slip away. It was not going to happen this go around at all. And Jim McElwa McElwain is very uh, kind of re-energized with his with his appendix removed. <laughs> uh, did not like sitting at home on the couch. An experience he does not want to revisit anytime soon. Yeah, and you talk about a culture shift. Check out these conference records. 2018 to 2019, making a big splash in the MAC Last year, I was talking to KP, uh, Khalil Pippleton, this morning, and uh, he talked about it just being a learning year last year through COVID-19, through life, just for a lot of people in general. But this year was kind of, you know, let's see what we're made of. And they're showing, it, they're showing exactly what they're made of right now. And Robert Morris, you know, the, the challenge for them has, has been, I mean, geez, the first game canceled by COVID uh, within the Robert Morris program. So... I mean, obviously, there, there's things more important than football. And for Bernard Clark and his staff to have to manage that part of it effectively and then handle the personnel changes and create an efficient game plan against a good Central Michigan team, that's a lot to ask for. For sure. And this group has just been through a lot in general. You talk about an FBS school that doesn't have access uh, to, with a lot of scholarships and keeping their guys there throughout the summer. They had to get summer jobs to even stay on campus this year. They couldn't afford it. So this, they just had a lot to overcome. Uh, this is a young team, so expect them to grow as the season progresses for sure. And of course for Central Michigan, not that they're looking ahead, but the schedule is out there and they're going back into the SEC next weekend at LSU. And whether that's a step up from playing Missouri, well, that's a different discussion, but still another hostile, difficult road environment for Central Michigan. So there was some importance on this game for Central Michigan for sure, not just to win, but to, you know, to play efficiently and competently 
for four quarters. Yeah, and they are doing it just that. They're, the unknowns, the questions that they had going into this game, they're kind of starting to solve them. They felt like they belonged last week. We'll see if they belong next week. Randy, what would you guess is the mindset that Robert Morris might try to, you know, recalibrate and bring into this third quarter so that they can, you know, start to just make the game more competitive? Yeah. Gabe Lavara talked about them being able to adjust in moments like these, right? So they'll, re they'll, they'll need to put it to good use. They had it. I'm sure they had a speech uh, to rally up the guys in there, you know, down 28-0, away, play first game. game, get those jitters Picking out of the team. way, and let's play some ball. And you know, it's not really so much about a speech, but it's just about, hey, win the play, whatever that play is. Do your job. Do your job, right, exactly. One of the points of emphasis from that guy, Bernard Clark, who's trying to find some positives to spark his team and get that compass pointed in the right direction. Ball blows off the tee again. We mentioned it's been, you know, the weather's been nice, but we just got to contain the breeze a little bit, at least while the ball is on the tee. So Michael Benson is being tested patiently. I should say his patience is being tested. And we'll hope that Mother Nature will help out. And she does, short kick. And caught inside the 10. This is not Pimpleton, but <laughs> a guy, an impact player nonetheless. Darius Bracey is maybe not quite the caliber of playmaker, but he's getting up there. We've seen some big things from him today. Yeah, big time. He is stepping up, stepping up in a lot of different ways. We have a lot of depth in this backfield, and he was one of the guys making plays early in that first quarter. Good hands out of the backfield, we saw. All eyes on the quarterback for CMU. Jacob Sermon is back on after Daniel Richardson came in late in the second quarter and did not miss a beat offensively. First and 10 from the 32. Play fake, little toss in the middle, wide open. Oh, and he couldn't spin out of it, but a good catch to Marion Lukes. Lukes, another one of these guys. Freshman, making big plays when it counts, taking hits. Good pickup. William Barber makes the stop, but not before a big CMU pickup into Colonial's territory. On the ground. And there is zero there for Lou Nichols. He plows ahead. I don't know if he got maybe one. That is a rare no game on the ground for CMU. Dante Booty on the tackle for the Colonials. Sorry, it's Dante Bodie. Gain of just one. Sermon. He's going to call it himself. Good slide. And a flag. That's a close one, but that's probably going to be a targeting call. Sermon able to pick up the first down, I think, on his own. Yeah, we got to see the call first. Don't want to move too fast. Tyron, Tyron Cloyd on the stop. Dead ball. Personal foul. Late hit. Late hit. Defense, Defense number 23. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Sermon using his legs again here. Doesn't like what he sees. Tuck it. Be safe. Let's see where the helmet goes. Well, fortunately, the officials decide it's not worth examining for targeting, so it's first down pickup for CMU, but they're in good position at the 25. Quarterback keep on the Wildcat. And boy, I tell you what, when they put Bracey under there, he is not easy to bring down. 
Chagog on the stop, but again, we, we've seen Central Michigan do it time and time again, Randy. They continue to get yardage after the initial contact. These guys are not going down easy at all. He bumping off a little arm tackles. I'll take that. He just dragged two defenders. These guys are monsters down there. Sermon on the move and trying to use some footwork and staying up. That was a good run. Crafty inside the 10 to about the 9. So William Barber again on the stop, but it's, you know, again, it's Robert Morris isn't really disrupting anything that Central Michigan's trying to do offensively. First and goal from the nine. Handoff. And good tackle on the end. That was Lou Nichols, but he got set up there by Jamar Chagog. Well, Chagog's been everywhere for the Colonials. Sophomore out of Pittsburgh. He is, a, he is a force to be reckoned with defensively. Still positive yardage for CMU down to the six on second and goal. Sermon, wide open, end zone, touchdown, CMU. No problem. Dallas Dixon, another touchdown reception for CMU. Dixon is having some fun out here. Nice play action. Wide open in the end zone. Now that was not difficult at all. He threw his hands up before the ball yeah, even right. came down. He knew that was six the minute the ball left his hand. Central Michigan tacks another one on. 35 nothing is the lead on Robert Morris. Well, the passing numbers for Jacob Sermon today are tremendous. 10 of 13 for 101 yards and three touchdowns. I mean, just he's managed the offense efficiently and competently which is pretty much what he did last week at Missouri. Yeah, and this is a guy that's special. They talked about him being their guy, and he had great potential coming out of high school. This is a guy back in 2018 being a, a, the number three guy behind Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, so his pedigree and resume are strong, and again, there, was no, uh, there were no opening game jitters last week at Missouri. And, they, you know, they don't have to lean on him, given the experience of Daniel Richardson. We saw Richardson shine in the late going of the second quarter. So that's a good afternoon for that very talented quarterback. Let's see what Robert Morris can do. It's been an uphill battle for George Martin and company all day. They'll run and get a big hole here. All right. Wow, look at this explosion run. A little misdirection as they come off the edge, and that's Jalen Brown again being pressed into action, the freshman. Well, that's about as good as it's been so far for Robert Morris offensively. We just said, look, they have not been proactive about taking shots downfield. Yeah, and uh, he put the ball in his own hand. He, he's <laughs> taking advantage of opportunities. Big pick up there at the 49, now on the ground and pounding, maybe for a yard, is Jordan, Amir Jordan. See a new tackle by Laquan Johnson. Only a gain of one makes it second down and nine. Well, 
That's not going to win football games. I'm no expert. You're the expert. We need production. Four for six, 10 yards. Let's open it up a little bit. Martin on the move. And he'll throw it into section 22. Had some space to maybe run a little bit, but was hoping somebody might break downfield. It didn't happen. And that's just good coverage there from the Chippewas. Putting them in uncomfortable yeah, situations. Weird. When you got to throw the ball away two to three times a possession, it, it, it doesn't bear well for the offense. Third down and nine for Robert Morris. The Colonials from the Big South Conference. Trying to ignite things here in this third quarter. There's a good run. Maybe not enough for a first down. But they go with Jordan Johnson and get the ball down to about the 45. That's about four yards short. And the punting unit comes on for the Colonials. Troy Hairston helping on that tackle, along with Troy Brown. Punting game started poorly for Robert Morris, but it's gotten a whole lot better as that punt will skip into the end zone. And a timeout here at Central Michigan. CMU up big on Robert Morris. There's Mac football all over the place today and certainly some scores to keep you abreast on. How about the one in South Bend? Not too far from here, Toledo on the, on the road with a lead against top-ranked Notre Dame, number eight. That's top-ranked, but you know, it's close enough, right? Wyoming put a beat down Northern Illinois. Boy, the Husky, the uh, Northern Illinois looked so good at Georgia Tech and then could not follow up little flare pass here is complete and Central Michigan cannot get free for big yardage afterwards Wall is at the 25 so Sermon stays in at quarterback for CMU you would kind of expect the game plan and game uh, play calling to be kind of vanilla from here on out for the chips right you would expect it but uh We'll see what they have up their sleeve. Nothing to get revved up about here. And on the carry, this is Marion Lukes. Lukes, a freshman from Charlestown High School in Indiana. Brings up third and short. CMU can just chip away here. Still on the ground, and they get for, they get the first down. Don't have to be flashy at all, which kind of is fitting with what CMU has been doing today. There is a Marion loose carry for a first down, but. Central Michigan knew they didn't have to come out here and, you know, throw haymakers early. And they have kept Robert Morris at bay on the edge. Here comes number 88, Pimpleton. Boy, when he gets revved up and charging to that sideline, watch out. Big time. The coaches want the ball in Pimpleton's hands. He makes plays. He, they... They talked about him being a guy that if he goes down, we need multiple people to step up. That's just the type of energy that he brings to this program. Not an easy guy to stop. Anelio Bazzacco on the stop. They swing it back to him. And Pippleton continues to get touches. This time he's at midfield. Kevin Barbe, who coached the receivers for two years, saw him firsthand, and he talked about him just being a competitor. Him, Ja'Cory Sullivan, Dixon, those guys in the receiving core just wanting to play football. They love the game. 
you can see it out here today. 5'8", 175, so he is not an overwhelming specimen by any means. There's a good carry by Miles Bailey. Almost shook off a tackle and would have really exploded that run. Instead, the uh, stop made by Taven Harville for Robert Morris. CMU moves the chains again into, or after, I'd say down to the 42-yard line. Sermon on the roll. And he'll just wing it. Nothing downfield for him there. And, and we're seeing him get rid of the ball. This is a good thing. We saw nine sacks last game, right? This is somebody who's learning from his mistakes early. Getting rid of the ball in tough situations and, and finding his team in, in, in good situations to keep the drive alive. No negative yardage. Central Michigan's real concern is just burning up as much game clock as they can. On the carry, this is Lou Nichols. Inside the 40. So third and seven long. A passing down for CMU. It has not been all Jacob Sermon at quarterback today for the Chips. We got some good Daniel Richardson snaps late in the second quarter. Sermon under pressure, and down he goes. Well, there's the play that Robert Morris has been waiting for pretty much the entire game. Yep, and that's what uh, that's what Jim McElway was worried about. He said that this team has some blitz packages you need to be weary of. Coming off the edge there, making a big play. Well, earlier in that game, Sermon probably would have found it, but this time, Quentin Jackson was fast enough to get there in time and make the sack. And Bernard Clark and Robert Morris calling Charged a timeout. Out. Robert Morris there first. 30 seconds. As we still have some... Uh, Time here in this third quarter to I mean, it certainly doesn't look like Robert Robert Morris is in a position to make a run in this game let's go to the scoreboard first though with games in progress in the back some in progress some coming later Temple at Akron the Owls have a lead there Nebraska and Buffalo head-to-head -head. Penn State over Ball State Big one tonight. Illinois State Western about to kick off tonight. Eastern Michigan at Wisconsin. The Eagles have a pretty good streak of games, of seasons, where they've won at least one game against a Big Ten opponent. Might be tough tonight, but they get, they get the chance at least. And the punt takes a friendly hop and is down at the five-yard line. We will break here in Mount Pleasant, a 35-0 CMU lead. Thirty-five nothing, Robert Morris, with this game comfortably in hand as we work our way through the third quarter. And the Colonials, well, they're going to work with bad field position here. And here comes the run. Try to just kind of play it safe and conservative with the Amir Jordan carry. Tackle made by Amir Sadiq for CMU. Second down and seven. And they stay on the ground, trying to bang inside. 
And again, the number 33 is called. That's Jordan. Randy, we saw Central Michigan's offense kind of get their running game going early by attacking inside. That was successful, and now we're seeing Robert Morris kind of pick up on that same concept. It gets your team going. It gets your team going when you have moments to kind of break through, get five, four-yard gains to kind of get a little bit of energy going. And that's exactly what the Colonials need right now. Third down and five. Martin with some pressure, throwing a crossing route in the middle, and that is not going to be enough for a Robert Morris first down. Complete to Jalen Brown, but it's short. A combo tackle for CMU. George Douglas part of that combo. And Robert Morris has to punt. And when that puts number 88 for Central Michigan at midfield, you know that's trouble. He'll call for a fair catch here, though. And you got to believe that Robert Morris has seen enough of Khalil Pimpleton. We talked about the rushing yards that Central Michigan got. Their running game was good last week at Missouri, and they just kept the good times rolling today. And it's almost identical. Yeah. <laughs> Twins. I expect those numbers despite yeah. the game goes on, though. And then that's, you know, Jim McElwain told us all that negative yardage we took with quarterback sacks. Drove him crazy. On the ground, Lou Nichols exploding in the middle and bumped into his own guy, fell ahead. But a big chunk of play for CMU. A lot to get excited about here. He's like, whoa, look out. Friendly fire still. Nice pickup for the chips. Inside the 35. On the ground. Boy, look at that blocking up front for Lou Nichols. All that space in the middle. And he is shifty enough to know how to kind of maneuver through the traffic. The big guys getting it done up front. Kevin Barbe talked about this group, those group of O-linemen being nasty, gritty. That was Miles Hayes who made the stop. Second and short for CMU, still on the ground, hole in the middle. Boy, repeat, Lou Nichols again. Chagog on the stop, but clock keeps rolling. CMU's first down takes them right to the 20-yard line. And we're inside the two-minute mark of our third quarter here at Kelly Short Stadium. Central now with 21 first downs to two for Robert Morris. And here comes Pimpleton on the end, and he gets around, and touchdown! Just like they drew up. 20 yards for Khalil Pimpleton. He's scary looking at him coming across here around the end and this is this is easy to hit vision finding his man's game well central michigan's offense has been percolating all afternoon you can, give, you can give game balls to a lot of different people. For sure, and KP again, one of those guys that the coaches couldn't stop talking about. 
a story on his competitiveness. Kevin Barbre has a son. And earlier this year, he mentioned that uh, they were playing Madden. He threw him out 76 to 13. He takes no prisoners, and he's doing the same thing here today. Yeah, no mercy. The 20 yard score by Pimpleton, adding the score here for Central Michigan as they continue to put this game out of reach 42 to nothing. And I can't imagine that. Jim McElwain is in, in a bad way in any way today with what he's seen his team do. Oh, you can't be mad at it at all. You know, I guess what I mean is that just in terms of checking off all the boxes of, you know, efficient, productive. You know, again, this was not an, this was not an extremely uh, aggressive game plan. They didn't have to really, you know, come out guns blazing. And it was unknowns for him. He was watching again from the sidelines. He, he was watching from his couch oh, last week. Yeah, I was going to say even better, his lazy boy. <laughs> he was watching from the lazy boy last week. He has an up-close and personal view of these guys getting it done. So he has a lot to feel good about. And we asked him, too, you know, the, the officials did not really do a lot of favors for Central Michigan last week. And when we addressed that with Jim McElwain, he was deciding against talking about that. Now we've got a turnover on the kickoff in Central Michigan, adding insult to injury now as they have the football back. Looking on the field with the fumble, recovered by the kicking team, first down. Oh man, right on the crown of the football. That thing popped out. It's a free game. Amir Jordan on the return, but Central Michigan puts the helmet on the ball, gets it loose, and more offensive opportunities for CMU. Moretti scooping it up. Right place at the right time for Moretti. Again, another freshman. This is a team with 55 freshmen on their roster right now. And that was the first turnover today by either team. Quarterback switch. There's Daniel Richardson handing off on first down. And again, Miles Bailey on the carry there. We're, we're getting a wide array of personnel changes for Central Michigan. We're, you know, again, if you have a game ball, you can give that to a lot of different guys. Take your pick. Here's Richardson's numbers today. As we're in the final minute of our third quarter. Carey on the ground. And ba Bailey trying to stay up. Still falls ahead and gets eh, just outside the 25 yard line. Maybe they'll spot it at the 27. Third and short for Central Michigan. Probably the last play of our third quarter is coming here. On third and short, Richardson. He'll try to run inside and he'll get tackled. But we've got a flag in the backfield. With just three seconds left in our third quarter. Tom Stapleton, our official referee today. Offense, number 68. That penalty is declined. Brings up fourth down. That would be a brand Braden sword out. The backup right tackle. And our third quarter this comes to a close here at Kelly Short Stadium. Three quarters in the books and a raucous. Home opener for Central Michigan, all CMU. Sermon and his friends doing all kinds of good things here. 42-0. Central Michigan, three quarters of the way home to a 
home opening win. Well, it's the numbers don't lie at all. And Central Michigan's going to line up for a field goal here on fourth and five. So it's about a 46-yard kick. And it is on the way from Marshall Meter, and it is good. He's got a leg. Yeah, impressive. Well, you just want to take advantage of your scoring opportunities. And you know, I'm, I'm, if you're Central Michigan, I mean, there's so many positives to pick from, but there's never a bad time, Randy, for a, a team to have a, a, a confidence boost. You know, they, they, they felt good about the way they played at Missouri, but, you know, the chance to, you know, kind of maybe escalate things uh, against it. Yeah, you're you're probably outmatching your opponent today in a lot of ways, but still You still got to take care of business and we talk about the inexperience and youth on this roster That makes this result today even more impressive, right? Exactly 55 true freshmen on this team right now a lot of youth and a lot of guys stepping up We saw Bracey in the backfield making some plays along with Luke's These are guys that are stepping up it doesn't matter how old they are Playmakers make plays. And the Chippewas get three more points. And ball stays in play. Caught on a hop. And here we go with Amir Jordan. Oh, and he gets stung. And, well, somebody got hit. Jordan was the returner. And Tony Brown is injured. And in a lot of discomfort for Robert Morris. We'll break here in Mount Pleasant, 45-0 CMU. So a couple of injuries there for Robert Morris. And the Colonials kind of friendly fire on that kick return. So we'll keep tabs on Amir Jordan, who was one of the players that took some contact and here's George Martin who is just you know it's been, just been a, a very difficult day for the Colonials offensively and Martin has to keep and he gets taken down and there is just every time the Colonials turn around Central Michigan has an answer, a jersey, a helmet right in their face. It's a loss of three yards on first down. And there's the handoff. They try to run wide. That's Sam English, sophomore. Tackle by Central Michigan's Amir Sadiq. Third and eight. They stay on the ground. Kwamir Jenkins on the carry. Number 38, Jenkins on the carry. And again, I just, Tackle. it's understandable, I guess, Randy, but the challenge is the way the, philo the philosophy for the Colonials offensively early was, we're not going to take chances downfield. And the problem is, it's backfire. It's backfire. And I know that personnel issues and COVID have been have been very difficult and trying for Bernard Clark. So that certainly helps paint the picture of why the score is the way it is. Ball bounces and a different return man is on for CMU. So we'll take a timeout here in Mount Pleasant with a 45-0 lead for Central Michigan. Central Michigan's been in control since the get-go. And 
and they have mixed it up effectively. They've used both of their one and two quarterbacks. And everything we've seen from Daniel Richardson says he's ready. The play fake on first down, throw on the run, and caught. I think that's a catch. And he did he get that foot down? He did. That was tremendous. Not quite. I thought he got that foot down. That's LeVar Gums. Going on the field is an incomplete pass. Second down. Yeah, that was close, though. Close, close. And Richardson close. made a very good throw. On the run. Let's see how close it gets. Ooh, well, yeah, not that close. A couple, cut that's a couple the, toes on the drawback from being on the other side of the field, like we are. So it's incomplete, second and ten. And they'll toss. And this is Bailey who springs free and falls ahead for big yardage for CMU. Actually, that's to Javion Stepney who's come in. Tackle for Robert Morris by William Barber, but again, there is no reason that Jim McElwain should not be digging deep into his depth chart right now and mixing in some fresh legs and fresh bodies. <laughs> Remember he told us during the week that all he wants to do in the fourth quarter is run. Here's another run, another big one, and does Javion Stevie, Stephanie, sorry, breaks another big one. Lots of personal changes. Yeah. But one thing remains the same. They are getting first downs, a lot of big gains here. And the chains move for CMU. Down to the 18, and here we go again. Wow, look at this run. <laughs> They're going to just load up Stepney and let him go crazy. Yeah, but you're right. That's exactly what Coach Jim McElwain talked about. He wants to run the ball. Let's open it up early, get some explosive plays. But in the fourth quarter, I want to run the ball. That means we have control of this ball here. They want to gobble up that play clock and the game clock. Do they not see this receiver, Waddle? Mm. Well, flags are coming. Could have been a bad day. False start, offense. Number five-yard penalty, first down. Well, penalty-wise and turnover-wise, this football game has been played fairly clean. That way. Robert Morris would prefer to have something on that scoreboard besides a zero, but. That goose egg is not pretty yeah. right now. From the 12-yard line for CMU, Richardson will throw off the back foot and incomplete. I don't think that was going to be close to a catch. Keegan Kesu. Lofting it up there, giving his big tight end a shot. Why not? Officials time out for an injury. Officials take a timeout here. And we'll pause with them. A 45-0 lead for Central Michigan in Mount Pleasant. Central Michigan with the test last week at Missouri. They thought that was a coulda, woulda, shoulda victory. And after this week, they'll be stepping back into SEC territory, so we'll get a rundown of CMU schedule coming up. And again, we've seen great play from Jacob Sermon, and we've also seen high-level play from this guy, Daniel Richardson, who's under center right now. And they hand off again. They've just been pounding it with to Javion Stepney on this series, and why not? He is making an impact for Central Michigan on the ground.
Tyron Cloyd on the stop for Robert Morris. Brings up third and goal. Can't imagine that Central Michigan's got designs on getting in the end zone for sure. And Stebney again is going to try and reverse field, but there's too many white jerseys there. Number 26, Miles Bayman on the carry. And Ricardo Watson on the stop. Looks like we see the field goal unit come yep. out. Yep. Meter to kick the field goal. So here's a shorter field goal attempt for Marshall Meter. And this one is no good. Surprising right there. Well, that's not the level of consistency that you're going to want for Central Michigan, but let's uh, look at what's coming up ahead for Central Michigan. Schedule-wise, we mentioned that uh, LSU is next as they step back into the SEC. And then two weeks from today back, two weeks from today back home here against Florida International. And then the MAC schedule kicks off with road games at Miami of Ohio. On, and then uh, and then at Ohio. And they have a lot of reasons to feel good going into this game. 45-0 up in the fourth right now. They played a great ball game against their opponent last week. So uh, we'll see what happens at LSU. Quarterback change for the Colonials. They'll run, though, with Jalen Brown. Another turnover. Central Michigan thinks they got it, Moving but their the officials say the he's down. down. First down. First down. Looks like the ground caused the contact there. The oh, wait, the, yeah, the ground caused the fumble on that one. This is Steve DePaul, the new quarterback for Robert Morris. On the ground, and nothing flashy there for Jordan Johnson. So here's DePaul with the unglamorous opportunity. I mean, hey, look, when, you, when you're uh, a guy who's on the sidelines and wants to be on the field, you don't care really when that playing time comes, but this is certainly not an ideal circumstance. I guess you just got to make the most of it. Is that the mindset? Definitely have to make the most of these opportunities. These are guys that are, again, haven't had much repetition. First game of the year for a lot of these guys seeing their first college action. But when your name gets called, you step up. It doesn't matter what the score is. Your number is called. You got to make a play happen. Premier Jenkins on that carry. Day-Day Hill on the CMU tackle. Ball at the 35, third and four. <laughs> Little misdirection run there, and they bring it back in the middle. And Kwamir Jenkins, who was kind of forced into a significant role, they love him. He's got speed, he's got a quick burst. Problem is they kind of wanted him to come along a little slower than this, but the absence of Jonathan Wynn, Elijah Jackson, guys that did not make the trip. Again, the COVID turning this Robert Morris Colonials program upside down. Starting with the upset practice schedule last week, the game cancellation at Dayton, and then the extension of COVID into making sure everyone's clear for this week. Fair catch called for and made at the 31. Break at Central Michigan. Chippewas leading 45 to nothing. Well, Michigan, uh, Central Michigan with a lot of chances to mix things up. The depth chart. This is now a quarterback change. Tyler Pape on for CMU. 
Pape from Spring Arbor, Michigan, 6'4", 210, freshman. So he's not too far from home, and boy, there's you can make a nice living if you're handing off to Dejavion Stepney, which has been pretty much the theme for Central Michigan. Oh, he's making some plays. Yeah. A lot of reasons to get excited when you watch this film and break it down next week. The running back room is going to have a lot of juice in there. Yeah, you know, sometimes I would think, Randy, it's it's hard. You know, a coach maybe doesn't always know what to take out of a win like this. I mean, obviously, you're happy with the win. You're happy it's one-sided as we watch Stately again trying to get outside. But, you know, you still know that what's looming is a much different animal next weekend in Baton Rouge. Exactly. So you go in, you, you walk out of this with your head up high, but you got to get back to work. Grind time is right away. You're going back down into the SEC territory. So it's it's all smiles right now, but come Monday, got to get it back in shape. Yeah, it's like, you know, Nick Saban says the, the, the rat poison when you start, you know, kind of believing in all that you do. And here's Stateney again. Boy, he is, he is not an easy guy to bring down. There's a late flag near the tackle. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 37. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. It's on the defensive back, William Barber, so... Yeah, this, this game has been pretty clean penalty-wise. Stepney gets a well-deserved breather. And on the ground, Central Michigan, again, it's just this run, run, run. Ironi Jackson on the carry. You mentioned it right with that rat poison that uh, Saban spoke about this past week, but at this point you're kind of challenging yourself throughout the game. Your opponent is, is kind of in a mismatch situation, but it's not about that. It's about getting your assignments done and judging it from there. And they're going to run the end here. Let's see if they can get the corner. Oh, great ankle tackle. Well, we know that that play works when it's Khalil Pimpleton, but not quite as successful with Keandre Collins. And by the way, correction on a double jersey for CMU. That was Jake Tafelski on the earlier run. Not Irony Jackson. So third down and ten. Pass complete near side. Very conservative. And that's Tafelski. And he stays in bounds to keep the clock running. Fourth down and five. Pretty long for a field goal. Let's see what uh, Jim McElwain is going to keep, keep Pape and the offense out the field. Now flags come and Robert Morris is indicating that CMU has already moved. Ball start, and offense they're right. number 57, five yard penalty, fourth down. Well, and that's again when you talk about that rat poison, up early, but again, take care of your assignment. Do your job, know your alignment and assignment. Don't jump off, jump off sides. Those are things that are gonna get Jim McElwain, a reason to swear come Monday, right? You don't want that. You want all good things going into next week. 
Well, he saved himself some money by not publicly dissing the SEC refs that were not uh, on their game last week. There's a pass and a completion as West Central Michigan continues to try to just play competent offense. Keandre Collins on that catch. And it's short of a first down, no harm done. There's not a whole lot of drama left to pull out of this game. And both teams have switched out quarterbacks here in this second half. Central Michigan's used three different quarterbacks today. And Daniel Richardson, we you know mentioned him. He's certainly not a forgotten man by any means. He's played very well for CMU. And Robert Morris. They're going to be on to better things, certainly, because after this game, they're going to head back to Pennsylvania and have COVID. And they won't just have Mount Pleasant in their rearview mirror. They'll have COVID in their rearview mirror. And they'll start to right their ship. And that's what we expect as we take a look at what's coming up for the Colonials. At home against Howard, then uh, visit to North Carolina A&T. Their big South Conference schedule will kick into high gear at that point. On the ground, just nothing there. Steve DePaul continuing to work offensively, but it just hasn't been much opportunity for Robert Morris to, you know, really get things going. And, you know, we discussed earlier that the propensity for not looking for big plays downfield maybe has hurt them. But, you know, coaches make a game plan, and if you start deviating from it, well. That's when bad things yeah, can bad happen. Yeah, bad things can happen, too. So it's hard to say what's right or wrong for Bernard Clark in Central Michigan. Or, sorry, for Robert Morris. But you said it right. It's back to the drawing board for these guys. They go back and they're getting some talent back in Elijah Jackson. A few other guys that were out this week. And uh, hopefully they can make some strides here moving forward going against Howard and uh, mixing it up once they get into their conference game. Fourth and nine. Here comes the punt. Fair catch called for and caught. And Central Michigan and Robert Morris, little chippy play downfield. Well, we mentioned keys to the game. Can Central Michigan run on the ground? Yes, they can. Man, 240 yards last week. They could have had this yeah. week. 305. Putting numbers up. Yeah, there's a lot to be pleased with. And a lot of guys doing it. It wasn't just Nichols. It was just Luke's. Another new quarterback for Central Michigan. Chips going deep in their roster. Step me on the carry. There's your Bailey Smith. Well, if you got him, you might as well play him. In a big story, uh, this early in the game. All right, Bailey Smith was the guy who led the team on the field for the game today, and he led the CMU team out carrying the American flag. He was Ranger in the U.S. Army before he came to CNU this summer. So that puts a nice end of story on this game as we honor everybody who's made uh, sacrifices for our armed forces. And that's going to put a wrap on this game. And Central Michigan is going to protect home field with a 45-0 win over Robert Morris and the Colonials. And a great afternoon of football here. Thanks so much to my partner, Randy Buffington, and our great production crew here in Mount Pleasant. 
I'm Dan Gatowski. We say so long from Central Michigan and Mount Pleasant.